A-level math by far is the most popular A-level subject. At around 11% of people that take A-levels end up taking A-level math. That being said, a very common experience, almost a canon event in year 12, is people realizing how hard A-level math is compared to GCSE math. I remember in the first couple of months of year 12, I knew a bunch of people that didn't only get a 9 in GCSE math, they also got a 9 in GCSE further math. But despite all of that, they were averaging Ds and Cs in the first couple of months of year 12 A-level math. That just highlights the jump from GCSE math to A-level math and how during GCSE math you could get away with little studying and still get the top grades. But if you want to do well in A-level math, then you have to put in the effort in a very efficient and effective way. How did I do it though? Well, first you have to understand that math is quite a unique subject. Basically, every other STEM subject is some sort of blend between memorization and problem solving. For example, for physics, you're going to have a bunch of written questions where you have to explain some sort of concept based on knowledge that you've memorized. But then you're also going to have some sort of calculation questions where you're going to have to use your knowledge and problem solving skills. But for math, it's only problem solving. There isn't really anything to memorize. That's why when it comes to math, it's better to completely ditch knowledge and flashcards. There's only one exception though, the one stats unit where you have to memorize stuff like quota sampling and consensus and all of that. Other than that one unit, there's no point in making flashcards or notes. So how do you revise then? Well, here's exactly how I did it. Firstly, before doing anything, I structured my studying to make sure that I'm always on track and I'm not missing out on anything. If you want to know exactly how I structure my studying, then you can watch this video. But in short, I just make a list of every single thing that I need to do. And I'll get to that later. Once I have the checklist, I'll then look at how many days are left until the exam and then pace myself to make sure that I'm on track to cover everything. For example, let's say I have 20 tasks and then 40 days left until the exam, then I'll do a task every other day. Now, what are those tasks on the checklist? Well, I believe that the secret to efficient studying is to make your studying routine as simple as possible, which is what I've always done. I did Edexcel for math. So for each chapter, I'd first start off with doing the mixed exercise in the textbook, which is basically like some sort of end of chapter question set. Now, if there's any question in that mixed exercise that I couldn't do, then I go back to the subtopic questions and I grind those until I can get those right. I'll then go back to the mixed exercise and do the question that I got stuck on. And once I get it right, I then move on to the other questions in the mixed exercise. Now, once I'm completely done with the mixed exercise, I'll check it off the checklist and then move on to the next task. Now, once I'm completely done with all of the mixed exercises for a paper, for example, the pure paper, I'll then move on to past papers. Now, the good thing about math is that there's literally a never ending supply of math past papers, so you're never going to run out. And for that reason, when I first start doing past papers, I treat them as just practice questions. So I take my time and really try to get a sense of the paper. At this point, you're not 100% sharp when it comes to doing past papers. So taking your time and using the marks seem to help, that gets you up to that sharpness that you need. But then as the exam approaches, I'll then start transitioning into the final phase, which is strict exam conditions. It's very, very important that you mirror the exam conditions as much as possible. You should only give yourself the time you'd actually get in the exam, and you shouldn't use any help like the textbook or looking at the mark scheme or your phone or whatever. And most importantly, something that a lot of people fall into is breaking up the paper. For example, they'll do the first half of the paper under exam conditions with a timer, but then they'll pause it, they'll go take a break, do whatever, come back and continue the timer and continue the paper. Let me ask you a question. Can you do that in an actual exam? Of course not. So try your best to do the whole paper in one sitting because taking a break will give you a mental boost. So when you come back, you do better and that gives you a false impression that you're doing better than you actually are. Once you're done with the paper, just open the mark scheme and then start marking, but make sure you're strict. It's kind of hard to be harsh on yourself and strict while marking because your ego is on the line. But at the end of the day, you're only deluding yourself if you're lenient. It's better to take a hit on your ego if it means it will motivate you to study harder to fill those gaps in your knowledge. In terms of the resources that I used, I personally love the YouTuber called TL Maths. I think even though he's not the flashiest YouTuber with like the editing and the whiteboards and stuff, he explains stuff really well and his YouTube channel is very organized. The playlists are very helpful. So he was honestly the only YouTuber that I really watched when I was stuck with a problem and I needed help. And for past papers, just go on any website. I used Maths Made Easy because it was structured really well, but you could go on PMT. PMT also has a bunch of different questions that are not really past papers. They're just practice questions you could use, but I just use Maths Made Easy. You could find literally any website that has past papers. That's the good thing about math. There's so many resources out there. So just pick one and stick to it unless you completely finish the resources, then you can move on to another one. Because if you're just using a bunch of different resources, you're overcomplicating your studying technique, which makes it less efficient. So you're wasting more time. Anyways, that was a simple but very effective studying technique that I used in A-level math.